Greetings everybody, my name is Jim and I'm going to go through a little bit of a rundown of the fantasy trip from Steve Jackson Games with you today. A uh, great little tactical system and a role playing system. You could play this just as a battle game and have a blast. Um, but let's just get right into it here. Let's look at the statistics. Now these are condensed cards uh, for the sake of this being the tactical part of the game. But even if these were full fledged character sheets, the stats you see right here are actually all you'll really see. Everything else is battle, I mean, background and how much equipment you're carrying and such. But this is really all the stats you'll see because there are no others. And that might raise an eyebrow thinking, holy cow, I'm used to games with six or more statistics. Well, you're also used to probably playing with dump stats or heard, heard of that term by now, which means stats that don't mean anything. Everything here means something. There's a beauty into the simplicity of this. So let's go over it. Uh, the first I'll go over is uh, movement allowance, the one on the bottom, because that one's the one that's actually not condensed, and I'll explain condensed uh, statistics in a bit. Uh, basically, it's how uh, how much your character can move in a turn, how many hexes, and it's modified by race. Dwarves move slower than elves, of course, and uh, armor also slows it down. So Rajan here is a human who would normally have 10, but leather armor slows him down, and half plate slows Cadius down quite considerably. All right. That's movement, simple as that. And you can move up to half your movement and do an action on average. So even though they can fly across the board at eight to 10, it's really, realistically, it's five, four, and three. Okay? Now the next the three stats are the condensed stats, and that's because they're exactly the stats you think they are, but now more so. So let's go over it. It's your strength. Simply put, it's how heavy of a weapon you can carry to do more damage, how how much you can lift, uh, it, but it is also your endurance. It is also your poison resistance. It is also your literal hit points. Okay, With all those things combined, that's a powerful stat, you might say. Well, the other two are just as powerful. Let's go on. Dexterity is all about, as strength is about health of the body, dexterity is about movement of the body, it is about how, uh, you know, lock, picking a lock. It is about also rolling uh, through with the acrobatics. It is also your, how often you hit somebody, obviously. And it, it is combat initiative. There's two types of initiative in this game. And this one's combat initiative. And the reason that's important is because there is no such thing as simultaneous attacks in this. If I attack before you and I kill you, good. You don't get to attack back. That's just the way it is. Now that's mod, this is modified also by armor. You can see Corrigan here's got a, a 11 for its base stat, but a 10 otherwise, but that's modified by the armor. And same as Rajan, and as you can see, Cadius in this half plate, it's got a 7. All right, there's nice little trade-offs here, and they're very balanced. It's beautiful. So the next one is IQ. And as we talk about the, the body and the movement and the health of the body, IQ is all about the mind, obviously, how many spells you can have, how many skills you can have, the quality of the spells that you have, but it is also your mental fortitude, um, you know, resisting, uh, you know, torture uh, without giving up information, uh, being not being terrified, uh, overcoming fear, overcoming spells in that matter. So that is the big thing there. It's all kinds of reasons to have some points of IQ. You cannot really dump a stat without taking significant um, disadvantages in the game. So uh, that's the basics of the game. So let's just get right down to it. As far as stats go, that's the basics of the game. So, uh, I said there was two initiatives. This is the movement initiative, okay? It's a straight up roll. It can be modified by a skill like tactics. They may give you a bonus to it, but this is team movement, okay? The individual stuff comes later, but this is team movement. So, uh, we have our team that wins first, so they, we get to decide whether we want to go first or the goblins to go first. Believe it or not, we're going to want to go first here. And uh, the thing is, most games, it's usually... Um, 90% of the time, you're going to want the other guys to go first. You know, and you've seen if you've seen any other tactical games out there. In this game, I think it's more along the lines of 70, 30, or even better. And it has that, that you know, back and forth thing that you really makes you think every turn. But the reason we want to go first here is because we want to lock this guy in. We don't want him walking, walking away. Because what the, the idea of this scenario is these archers here are just going to ping these guys off. By the way, their goal is to actually just get to the other side over here. Or if they want to jump across over here. 
and there's rapids and falls right here there's a water rapids if you fall off here and there's a waterfall right here leading to your intimate demise so a lot of temptations for the characters to get into trouble all they got to do is get across and they can do that but characters being characters the way they are and players being players who they are chaos can easily ensue and get them into trouble anyway so we want say we did we wanted to get to this guy before he ran away and uh, guarded the south so uh, we're going to start with Cadius, I, I mean, I'm sorry, Rajan here. He's got a movement of eight, and he wants to attack, so he can only move four spaces to do so, and he can do that here. One, two, three, and four. And after you move, you can face any direction. Facing is important. I'll get to that later. But what's important here is now he's locked this goblin in. He's in his front three, which means this goblin can still move, but he can't move away. He'll be able to shift only one hex this direction or this direction. He's still got to be facing. I mean, not, not necessarily facing uh, Rajan, but he's got to be in his vicinity. He's engaged. Nothing he can do. So that locks him in. Now the second thing we're going to do is move Corrigan, just one, and face him this way. Because he's got a nice heavy crossbow. And when you do a missile weapon, uh, you, only have, you can only move one and be able to still shoot. So he's going to move one. That's as simple as that. Now Solar can move. Uh, we got her over here. She's got a 10. She can move up to five and still attack, and she can, she'll just move four, one, two, three, and four. And she's going to move her face and face this, uh, oop, sorry, face this goblin. She could do it like this, and that way she guards a little bit of her back from this goblin here when it's his turn. But that's okay. She can still stay there, but that's because we got Cadius coming up here. I keep hitting the wrong one. Cadius is coming up. He's got, he's got a six. He's not going to be able to attack. For two reasons. One, these guys are blocking him in pretty much now. But also because he can only move three and be able to attack. So what's he going to do? He's going to do something chivalrous for Solar here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And pretty much block off the rear, the chance of this uh, goblin getting a rear shot on Solar. So he'll stay here and just move her over here. And now it's the goblin's turn to move. And uh, basically, this goblin's going to move across the way. He's, he's going to stay here, and he's going to say that he's going to dodge, um, basically making it tougher for him to get hit. Um, and these goblins are going to move one forward, one forward, uh, one, one forward here. Move that die. And this goblin actually is going to... Nope, he's going to one, two, three. This is still the best thing. Going to go after Solar because Solar doesn't have any armor. And that's really a tough thing. And it's both these go goblins are going to. I was thinking this archer might go after him. And she he still might, uh, because you know, you don't you you gotta watch hitting your own man. And maybe I'll even just do it just to get over it. But that's everybody's move now. So what happens? Who attacks first? Well, this is this is the second part of initiative. This is by done by dexterity. Okay, the highest dexterity goes first before anybody else. In this case, it's Solar, and it's the adjusted dexterity, like Corrigan has a 10, not an 11. So Solar has a 14, and to hit, all you got to do is roll with the, any modifiers, your your dexterity or less. And a 14 on three-sided dice, that's what you use, three-sided dice. It's pretty easy for Solar to hit. And she's going to go after this boy right here. So let's roll those dice and see what she gets here. No modifiers, but she's got a 12, and that's good enough. And she is carrying a broadsword, which does two dice of damage. So let's roll that. Two dice of damage. This could be easy. Oh, it's eight points of damage on this goblin up here. There he is. And he's got nine points and no armor. So he goes all the way down to one. Now, two things happen here. For, oh, three things happen here. Holy cow. Eight points. First off, he's prone now. When you take eight points of damage, he's automatically prone, and he can do nothing his on his turn except for get up. Um, the second thing that happens is because you take more than five points in a turn, you get a negative two marker that goes right on your character for your next action. In this case, when he gets up, so it's not going to matter too much. But he, now that he's also below uh, three hit points, three strength, I should say, he gets negative three dexterity, and that'll happen until he gets healed not likely here but this negative five dexterity happens immediately so technically this goblin has a six dexterity which happens now so 
that's his dexterity for initiative. It goes he goes dead last in this turn right now. So next is uh, let's see, Corgan's got a ten, and for the for these guys up here, well the Goblin Dagger did have of eleven, but now like I said, we're down to a six, so he's not there. He's not going. The Bowmen also have ten. So who goes first? Ten and ten. Well, it's the person that won initiative. Uh, the team that won initiative. So Corgan gets the shoot first, and he's going to try to take out one of these bowmen, because if he can kill one, that'd be great. And with a 12 is not going to do it. And that's a bummer. So, not not for them. So now it's the the uh, the goblins' turn, so they're going to shoot at Corrigan. And there's modifiers, uh, of course. He, this guy's pretty close, so I'm not even going to bother it. He's got 7, so he's going to hit Corrigan with a 7. The short bow does... 1d minus 1 damage. I hope I'm not going too fast for you guys here. 1d minus 1. 1 minus 1 is nothing. Just plain nothing. That's how that goes. There's no minimum. That's it. So the second goblin with an 11 is totally going to miss. Um, it's modifiers, but he's still close enough. And so now the other one, you know, I'm going to do what I said I was going to do. I'm going to actually try to shoot Solar. So now that his guy's in the way with only one, <laughs> and he's prone now, so he might not hit him. But he's got to actually roll to miss him first. So we're going to roll to hit, miss. And with an 18. <laughs> oh my goodness. So that this guy has not had the best of days. Not only is that, oh, I'm sorry. This, this That's actually terrible for him. It's actually okay for this guy. This guy means it's, it's a critical miss because it's higher. It means his bro broke. So now he doesn't have a weapon at all. He's going to have to go with his dagger now for the rest of the game. Uh, a 16 is an automatic automatic miss, a 17 is a dropped weapon, and 18 is a broken weapon. So simple as that. So, now that we're done with that, so now we got Rajan with the 9, and we have the Goblin Spears with the 9. So who attacks first? It comes to our guys, so Rajan gets attacked. The only one he can attack is the, the Goblin, who is now prone, which means he gets a plus 4 to hit. Uh, plus two is in plus fours in this game. I mean, a plus two and a plus four isn't anything to sneeze at in your other role-playing games. But since we're using a 3D6 bell curve type thing going on here, plus twos and plus fours are just immense. So let's go here. He's jumping for joy, I guess, because I was gave him the bonus. So a seven's definitely going to hit for Rajan. So he's going to roll two dice, and it doesn't even matter because, I mean, he's going to be at least a one. So this guy is... He's just toast. So that goes away. That doesn't even matter. And there he goes. He's out. So let's take care of that for Rajan. Now the other goblin uh, attack, the goblin spearman. I guess I could have gone after this spear. Oh, it was that spearman. That's right. He couldn't have attacked that. Oh, my fault. This one's still alive. My fault, folks. So let's roll for... Uh, what did I roll? Did I roll damage? No, I did not. So we'll roll the two dice. And he gets 9 on this Goblin A. Alright. So he's got 2 points left, so these are still there, actually. But guess what? we got another set coming over here. So he's not going to be able to do anything. And uh, what he got, he's also prone. Yeah, he's also prone. So he's doing nothing but getting up. I mean, these guys are slacking these guys. All right, so now that's happened, and this guy was dodging, so that's the end of the, well, it's not the end of the turn. Now he gets up, and he gets up, because they're the ones that went last, and they can't attack. So that's it. That is the end of the turn. Wow. That's pretty uh, good for the, the good guys. They could just pretty much walk off right now. So let's take uh, another roll here. Now the goblins win first. So what are they going to do? Well, these boat guys can't do anything except for get up, so they don't have no options here. Um, he's going to move. Uh, he's going to move forward a little. He's going to move forward uh, right here. And this goblin's going to make a jump for it. One, two, and jumping a space is three points, three, four, five, and six, seven. Well, no, he's just going to stay right here and guard that so he can't, so Cadius can't get around and get a side shot. And so they can't do anything except for get up on their turn. Uh, and that, well, that's what they do. They get up. And they can face the direction so they don't have to worry about side shots even though they can't do much else. And Cadius will just come one, two, three. That sounds good right there. And so that's movement. And, and Corrigan, everybody else is going to stick around, I think. 
keeping these guys blocking from their own archers so they don't get hit. And Corrigan, I think, uh, since they're having such a good time, he's going to move two, and he's going to switch weapons around. I know, because the, it's going to take him two more turns before he can fire the heavy crossbow again. So he's going to change into his into his dagger, or oh, it's a light crossbow, but it's still every other turn. Um, now, you know what? He's going to knock it. He's going to knock it. He's going to go one and still knock it. So that's what he's doing. So everybody's moved. So now it is attacks. Solar gets to go first again. Rolling up to a 14 will hit it. And she's going to go after this one. It doesn't matter who she'd go after almost. She's going after this guy. And this time, totally wipes him out. There's nothing left. That's all there is to it. So after that, it is Corrigan again, but he's reloading. So now all three of these guys get to attack. And they're all going to go after Corrigan again. Corrigan, an 11 is going to miss. This guy, 13 is going to miss. And this guy's got a broken bow. So he's changing into his dagger right now. So that's it for them. So next is either Rajan or the other Goblin Spear. This one's at a negative three, so it's a six. You know, his dexterity is a six here. So we've got, so we got the uh, Goblin Spear and Rajan. Rajan's going to go first because, oh no, the Goblin Spear is going to go first. They want initiative, so let's do it. This Goblin Spear is going up against Cadius of all things. And gets a seven. Okay, and just to let you know, a five, a five is an automatic hit. A, a th four is an automatic hit with double damage, and a uh, three is triple damage, automatic hit. So he hits for seven, and he's going to get one uh, d plus one on the spear. Take care of this. One minus one is zero. There's no minimum, so that's it. So that didn't do very well for him. So let's go over. Uh, Let's go over here with uh, Rajan then. Rajan's got his guy, and he's up now, so he doesn't get the bonus. And the 12 is not going to do it. He's got he needed a nine, so that takes care of that. And then after that, uh, I think everybody's attacked that can attack. He had just got up. The other one's dead. So yes, it is now uh, Cadius's turn to slap this guy around. Cadius turn at seven. See the thing is about Cadius, he He's a tank, but he's not hitting very much. When he does, he does a lot, though. 2D plus 2. So, he uh, misses, and that's the end of that turn. So, uh, basically, guys, that is the gist of Steve Jackson's The Fantasy Trip. Um, you know, we can go on here, but, I mean, I guess you get the idea. You go around back, uh, have your minuses, the damage, and everything like that. And I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope it'll make uh, some more in the future. Have a good day. seven so he's going to hit corrigan with the seven the short bow does 1d minus one damage i hope i'm not going too fast for you guys here 1d minus one one minus one is nothing just plain nothing that's how that goes there's no minimum that's it so the second goblin with an 11 is totally going to miss um it's modifiers but he's still close enough and so now the other one you know i'm going to do what i said i was going to do i'm going to actually try to shoot solar so now that his guy's in the way with only one, <laughs> and he's prone now, so he might not hit him. But he's got to actually roll to miss him first. So we're going to roll to hit, miss. And with an 18. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So that this guy has not had the best of days. Not only is that, oh, I'm sorry, this, this that's actually terrible for him. It's actually okay for this guy. This guy means it's, it's a critical miss because it's higher. It means his bro broke. So now he doesn't have a weapon at all. He's going to have to go with his dagger now for the rest of the game. Uh, a, a 16 is an automatic automatic miss. A 17 is a dropped weapon. An 18 is a broken weapon. So simple as that. So now that we're done with that, so now we got Rajan with a 9. And we have the Goblin Spears with a 9. So who attacks first? It comes to our guys. So Rajan gets attacked. The only one he can attack is the, the Goblin, who is now prone, which means he gets a plus 4 to hit. Uh, plus two is in plus fours in this game. I mean, a plus two and a plus four isn't anything to sneeze at in your other role-playing games. But since we're using a 3D6 bell curve type thing going on here, plus twos and plus fours are just immense. So let's go here. He's jumping for joy, I guess, because I was gave him the bonus. So a seven's definitely going to hit for Rajan. 
So he's going to roll two dice, and it doesn't even matter, because, I mean, he's going to be at least a one. So this guy is, he's just toast. So that goes away, that doesn't even matter, and there he goes, he's out. So, let's take care of that for Rajan. Now, the other goblin uh, attack, the goblin spearman. I guess I could have gone after this spear. Oh, it was that spearman, that's right, he couldn't have attacked that. Oh, my fault. This one's still alive. My fault, folks. So, let's roll for, uh, what did I roll? Did I roll damage? No, I did not. So, we'll roll the two dice. And he gets nine on this goblin A. Alright. So he's got two points left, so these are still there, actually. But guess what? We got another set coming over here. So he's not going to be able to do anything. And uh, what it, he got, he's also prone. Yeah, he's also prone. So he's doing nothing but getting up. I mean, these guys are slacking these guys. All right, so now that's happened, and this guy was dodging. So that's the end of the, well, it's not the end of the turn. Now he gets up, and he gets up, because they're the ones that went last, and they can't attack. So that's it. That is the end of the turn. Wow. That's pretty uh, good for the, the good guys. They could just pretty much walk off right now. So let's take uh, another roll here. Now the goblins win first. So what are they going to do? Well, these boat guys can't do anything except for get up, so they don't have no options here. Um, he's going to move. Uh, he's going to move forward a little. He's going to move forward uh, right here. And this goblin's going to make a jump for it. One, two, and jumping a space is three points, three, four, five, and six, seven. Well, no, he's just going to stay right here and guard that so he can't so Cadius can't get around and get a side shot and so they can't do anything except for get up on their turn uh and that, well, that's what they do they get up and they can face the direction so they don't have to worry about side shots even though they can't do much else and Cadius will just come one two three that sounds good right there and so that's movement and, and Corrigan everybody else is going to stick around I think keeping these guys blocking from their own archers so they don't get hit. And Corrigan, I think, uh, since they're having such a good time, he's going to move two, and he's going to switch weapons around. I know, because the it's going to take him two more turns before he can fire the heavy crossbow again. So he's going to change into his into his dagger, or oh, it's a light crossbow, but it's still every other turn. Um, no, you know what? He's going to knock it. He's going to knock it. He's going to go one and still knock it. So that's what he's doing. So everybody's moved. So now it is attacks. Solar gets to go first again. Rolling up to a 14 will hit it. And she's going to go after this one. It doesn't matter who she'd go after almost. She's going after this guy. And this time, totally wipes him out. There's nothing left. That's all there is to it. So after that, it is Corrigan again. But he's reloading. So now all three of these guys get to attack. And they're all going to go after Corrigan again. Corrigan. 11 is going to miss. This guy, 13 is going to miss. And this guy's got a broken bow. So he's changing into his dagger right now. So that's it for them. So next is either Rajan or the other goblin spear. This one's at a negative 3, so it's a 6. You know, his dexterity is a 6 here. So we've got so we got the uh, goblin spear and Rajan. Rajan's going to go first because, oh no, the goblin spear is going to go first. They want initiative, so let's do it. This Goblin Spear is going up against Cadius, of all things, and gets a 7. Okay, and just to let you know, a 5, a five is an automatic hit, a, a 4 is an automatic hit with double damage, and a uh, 3 is triple damage, automatic hit. So, he hits for 7, and he's going to get uh, 1d plus 1 on the Spear. Let's take care of this. 1 minus 1 is 0. There's no minimum, so that's it. So that didn't do very well for him. So let's go over. Uh, let's go over here with uh, Rajan then. Rajan's got his guy, and he's up now, so he doesn't get the bonus. And the twelve's not going to do it. He's got. He needed a nine, so that takes care of that. And then after that, uh, I think everybody's attacked. They can attack. He had just got up. The other one's dead. So yes, it is now. Uh, Cadius's turn to slap this guy around. Cadius turn at seven. See the thing is about Cadius, he he's a tank, but he's not hitting very much. When he does, he does a lot though. Two D plus two. 
So he's uh, misses, and that's the end of that turn. So uh, basically, guys, that is the gist of Steve Jackson's The Fantasy Trip. Um, you know, we can go on here, but I mean, I guess you get the idea. You go around back, uh, have your minuses, the damage, and everything like that. And I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope it'll make us some more in the future. Have a good day.